Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Okay folks, I've just arrived at um, Appleford. Um, and of course it started raining. So I'm just gonna sort my stuff out in the uh, shelter and uh, make a move. But before I get going, I'm gonna try one of these uh, caramel lattes from um, uh, it's like a, a Morrison's own, so let's see what this tastes like. I tried the Tesco's ones, they're pretty good actually. Yeah, actually I would say that this is as good, if not better, than the, um, is it the Starbucks ones you get in the glass bottle. This is in a plastic bottle, but I prefer plastic bottles, but this is only a quid, so, and it's lighter as well to carry, because I'm, as I'm hiking, so. Yeah, it's nice. It's one of the uh, churches I'm going past. I walk into uh, Whitnam Clumps from Applefoot. Well, folks, I hope that that's not coming out too dark. Got the ICO on um, 100 on the GoPro 7. I noticed there's a GoPro 8 out. If I could afford it, I'd get it, but. On my budget, it's just not worth the upgrade. It's not big, a big enough leap for me. Same as when the Maverick 2 uh, drone came out, Pro, the Maverick Pro 2 came out. It just wasn't, wasn't worth the upgrade for me. In fact, in a way, the old, like the old drone I've kept is better for me because it's lighter than the new Maverick 2 drone. And the new Maverick 2 drone has loads of, for me, pointless features and it's just made the drone heavier and more expensive so it's a bit silly really but the camera the camera is good i wish i'd played more emphasis on having a decent camera and 4k uh video camera than um all the pointless gimmicks they put on there yeah okay having sensors so you don't crash your drone is great especially for beginners but do you know what i've never really crashed the drone I've noticed the sensors are more of a hindrance to me because when you're going along sometimes the sensors pick up the ground and it stops dead the drone when there's nothing in the way on, on the old Maverick Pro anyway. So um, yeah, I just wish they would have upgraded the camera made it into even better than it is made the drone a little bit lighter a little bit more flight time it would have saved a lot of processing power instead of having all these, set, to me, pointless sensors and. Um, little extras you know like all the little uh tracking modes which to be honest when i first got the drone messing around i used but then i slowly realized that those features those features really i don't use at all they're not they don't look that good really once you get into more of a professional sort of like uh droning or i should say um amateur semi-professional well i'm not professional but um I really do try and get some good cinematic shots. Um, maybe one day I will be professional. Okay, I think this is the River Thames. I'll correct you if I'm wrong on the screen. I'm pretty sure it's the River Thames I'm walking along past. And there's not been that much rain and it's pretty full up. So I'm guessing this, this place floods a lot. I've seen around the, these villages around here, like platforms to walk on in the villages for the footpath so obviously it does flood so yeah there's um, apparently a um, even newer Maverick coming out the Maverick 2 Pro the Maverick Pro 2 upgrade well update I guess and it's going to have loads of updated features I'm guessing those features are just going to be added on to the features that I wouldn't really use Rather than making it lighter, what I'd like to see is then make a lighter version, a light version of the drone with the same or better camera, but without all the features and just a lighter drone. Okay, filming this again on a on ICA 400. Ah, that's better. Yeah, there's an old cross there. I don't know what village we're in now, Long Winterton or Small Winterton, Whitnam. So I'm back in Little Whitnam. And in front of me, you can see uh, one of the Whitnam clumps. That's the highest one. That's one that's not the fault one. 
Although there's some earthworks in there, I'm not sure what they are though. Looks like it could be some kind of camp, uh, Iron Age camp or something. Okay folks, believe it or not, this is walking onto a little island on the Thames. Uh, this bridge comes out from Little Whitnam. It's a byway. Obviously by the looks of it, cars can't use it because there's a little blockage thing there. Um, just coming up to the main bit of the Thames on this bit, I went over... So this, this I'm on now is actually an island, um, I believe. Ah uh, yeah, you can tell this is the Thames. Actually it's quite really well flowing at the moment because there's been a lot of uh, water. Actually, no, this bit coming up now is the island, I think. Yeah, this is the island. And then it, it goes to the island <coughs> and then goes over another bridge. That's pretty cool. Coming up to the next bridge. I don't know while this is coming out, I might have it up too light. I don't like using automatic features on uh, GoPro 7, especially if you want to sell the footage of stock. You, you can't use automatic features, man. You've got to have it on um, manual, otherwise the colours are all over the place. Oh, I've got to, hopefully this bridge is alright because I've got a great big bag on my back as usual. And the river's in full flow. Ah, so this is the Thames path, this side, I would think. Which I have walked a lot of, not all of it, but just about most of it I have walked. Okay folks, well I'm going to take a better look at the uh, bridge on the island. You believe there's actually a house on the island? Well, of course there is, it's the Thames, isn't it? Looks like there's more than one house, actually. It was on a bloody car park there, mate. But anyway, yeah, there's some settlements on this little wee island here. The sun's shining the wrong way, but the clump is just over there. You might be able to just see through the trees. And um, down there is a weir and a lock. If I go and take a look at it. So yeah, this is actually the uh, Thames uh, Coast Path National Trail. Not Thames Coast Path, Thames River Path. I'm walking on too many coast paths. Uh, so yeah, the, I, I can't remember where it starts, but I've been from the start and I've actually been to the end as well. And I've done most of the walk, almost to London, but I kind of got a bit fed up with it after not too long after Reading, I think. It's like it started getting really, I don't know. But well, it's not good for camping after then, obviously. Um, there are areas when you're in the countryside to camp, but obviously when you get into the suburbia, you, you probably, <laughs> You're really going to want to stay at like a hotel or a hostel or something, or a Airbnb. Um, but actually, I like I like doing uh, suburban photography, so I kind of like to do it. Um, I've done so much uh, landscape photography, and videoing. Um, I love it, and I love to go in the countryside. Obviously, I absolutely love it, but um, I really do like taking urban video and photography as well, urban hiking. Um, I like all kinds of hiking, mountains, urban, you name it, anything different. Variety is the spice of life, isn't it? I believe this lock is called Day's Locks on the um, Thames River. And it's fascinating to me because I used to own a um, cabin cruiser. And um, yeah, I love it. Oh man, this is awesome, man. I don't actually know what I'm there, it's like people talking about. But yeah, check this weir out. This is, this is in full flow at the moment. I'm guessing this is the Amadia Thames Park. Um, the locks, the river 
Busy at the moment, is it? Usually, like I mean, I suppose it's out of season. Maybe the river's too flooded to um, navigate at the moment. There's a boat just behind me, um, but they've got these uh, chained off these locks now. We used to be able to walk up here. I don't know why why it's changed off. Maybe maybe it's like um, I don't know, health and safety. So yeah, this is Daylock, as I said, very quiet at the moment. Uh, it's out of season, obviously, it's uh, November now, November the, th the 4th today, actually. Bonfire night tomorrow night, or Guy Fawkes night, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, very quiet, very peaceful along here. But I, I just don't understand why these little bits of like chained off now it said i'm pretty sure it said only for boaters but yeah i mean i'm an experienced boater i had a, a cabin cruiser for years so yeah i know how to handle locks okay so not far from here is dorchester uh abbey i believe um and there's some kind of earthworks a bit further down there so i might investigate them they're not too far away and here is um the name of the lock, as I said, Daylock, and um, is the actual map of the uh, Thames path. So you've got the Thames head, that's the source of the Thames. I've been there, been all along here as Oxford, Abingdon, Wallingford, Henley, Goring, Pangbourne, Reading. Um, I might actually, I walked all the way, definitely as far as Windsor, maybe a little bit further, and I've also been to the I don't know, the old end, I don't know if it's still the end of the Thames Barrier. Yeah, Thames Barrier is the official end at the moment. But I think they're planning on making it go a lot longer. But um, yeah, it's surprising actually. The start, these areas are really beautiful actually. Um, and at the Thames Head, there's actually like a, a memorial where people leave like offerings like coins and stuff at the head of the Thames. Okay folks, well this is the uh, start of the Thames uh, footpath, uh, long distance trail, uh, at the source of the Thames. And this is um, photos from the Thames Barrier, which is the end of the Thames footpath. I took these photos when I did the um, Thames uh, footpath quite, quite a few years ago now. I didn't do it all, but I did most of it, uh, so please enjoy. So yeah, there's the... Uh official uh, sign for the um, Thames path and I'm thinking about heading up there where these these earthworks are but I can't really see anything it might not be that interesting yeah I'm not going all the way into Dorchester on this occasion but I wanted to see the earthworks um, so if you want to pause it and read that um, I'm just gonna have a read of it in myself okay folks there's um the earthworks along here is pretty incredible, but it's a little bit hard to film with the GoPro and um, it's on private land by the looks of it, no rights of way, but um, they're quite wide earthworks. It looks like it would have been a, some kind of channel for water from the Thames maybe, because it does go right up to the Thames, but it's not like a barrier to stop flooding, it's like a, like a diversion or something, like a be interesting to read up about that. Um, can't really do any droning, or I'm not too sure if you can drone here anyway, but there's too many animals about, farm animals, so. Yeah. It's beautiful, actually. 
it's really flat but it's, it's definitely not for stopping flooding it's just like some kind of like i said like a major diversion on the river or something but it's uh it's obviously not used anymore it's like totally dry and it's it must have been something like that i think I wonder how old it is yeah, i'm gonna have to look that up definitely yeah i was gonna walk all the way into uh dorchester but I'm going to save it for another day, I don't know if I just said that, but um, there is a bus from Oxford that uh, goes near there, you get like a day ticket, it would be a lot easier. Um, there's so much in this area, it's really low lying land by the Thames, so it's, it's, it's very prone to flooding and it's very muddy now. I like have walked, when I walked the coast, uh, the Thames path, there are lots of areas that are part, bits of path that were under the water. Uh, quite very flat. I don't know what time of year I walked it, but I didn't do it all in one go. I did it in bits and pieces, but uh, yeah, as I said from the start, there's, there's loads of the Thames path that's really beautiful and lots of places to camp on the way. It's just when you get into the real suburbia, kind of like, well, I can't afford to stay in hotels really. You know, that's like once in a blue moon, I can stop, afford to stop in a hotel because I do this for free. I'm not getting paid to do it. So, you know, I can't afford to stay in a hotel just to do some, a hike. It's just, that's a special treat when I stay in a hotel. Oh yeah. Hello. <coughs> Just looking at your campsite side. Dave's campsite. <laughs> don't don't think the campsite's open somehow. <laughs> it's very closed. Probably seasonal. Okay folks. Just had a uh, Morrison's meal deal. It's back down there at uh, the Little Whitnam church or sitting outside. Obviously there's no Morrison's here. I got that elsewhere. But um, I'm just heading up to uh, Whitnam Clumps, the highest point. And last time I didn't actually walk over to um, the, the, the uh, I think it's a long barrow or barrow. I think it's a long barrow. Um, I went to the uh, the highest point and the fort. I just head, head over to the Long Barrow. So I think I'm going to do that today. I don't really want to keep filming the same thing. I've been here before. If you want to see my other Whitnam Clumps video, um, I'll put it. I'll put it in the same sort of playlist. So um, you can see, just search for Whitnam Clumps or whatever. Or I'll put it up on the a link on it on the video. <laughs> it's a bit slippy in this mud. I don't think I could do with um, some crampons walking up there in that mud. <laughs> but this on my bag. I reckon this will be a good spot to come to in the winter when it's been snowing. That'd be pretty awesome. Well, might be some fireworks tonight. It's the 4th of November. Well, it's actually quite a nice light for droning, actually. It's not about, but... It's nice light in this, uh... This is the, the highest uh, clump. I think it's called Round Hill. I think the highest one's called Round Hill. There's supposed to be, uh... Some, um... Poetry written on the tree here from a famous poet, apparently. I'll put it up on the screen what, all about it, what it is. I don't know if it's still here though. It's one of the trees up here. I think I could have found it. The tree, there's some kind of inscription on it, but it's long gone. I'll have a look. It looks like someone celebrated Halloween here.
I don't know if this is the poem tree. It looks like there was something written on here, but it's uh, worn away with time. Some fungus on the tree there. Not sure what type of fungus it is. I'm not a fungus expert. Maybe you want to comment in the comments about it. Okay, it could be this tree with a poem. It's got something written on here, and it actually says 1829. Nah, or was that 1929? Seems there's quite a few, seems there's quite a few trees in here that I've got writing on, so it's anybody's guess. I'm sure you can find out on the intranet what tree it is or if it's still in existence. Well folks, the trees are going a nice golden brown now, the leaves. Um, I'm going to head over to the uh, the fork clump and then hide, head over to this uh, long burrow which I didn't go to last time. As you see the fork's going a lovely colour at the moment. Uh, it's quite busy here at the moment. The weather's nice though. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be this nice. And uh, I've got a feeling it's still holidays because it's quite busy. I know this is the most this is the most busy attraction in Oxfordshire, apparently. Outdoor attraction. Now this this one is a fish the woods are officially closed off to the public on this clump because of a uh, danger of the uh, falling branches, um, which is fair enough. Um, you can still go in there at your own risk, though. I believe there's a there's a gate, but. Um, it's at your own risk. Um, the other one's okay to go in, but it, it gives a warning about it. But yeah, they advise you not to go in this one. I don't think we're gonna get a nice sunset because it looks a bit cloudy on the horizon now. So this could be the last of the sun, unfortunately. But yeah, we would have liked to do some droning, but there's just far too many, there's just too many people about. So I'm not going to be doing that. Um, might, hopefully I can get some in the morning when it's quiet. Or maybe there will be a good sunset. There's less people but the car park's actually full up. I don't, I don't blame people for it because it is beautiful here. I can totally understand that. We all have a right to be here. I'm going to have a look in these woods to see what it's like. Okay, folks, it's uh, padlocked up. Fair enough. It says many of the trees in this wilderness show here. As a result, the trees uh, to ensure public safety, therefore, is no access permitted to this uh, woodland. It's absolutely stunning along here. I know I said I wouldn't film up here again, but the light is nice at the moment. As I said, might not get a sunset. I'm just going to see if you can get through this way. But if it's locked off, I'm going to respect uh, respect. they don't want people going in there. It's probably for nature as well, to be honest. Um, there are plenty of other places to camp anyway. I'm probably not going to tell you where exactly I camp because I don't want to encourage people really to <laughs> camp. Obviously camping is uh, it's not a legal right, but it's not a crime either. beautiful well actually this gate is uh opened but it, it does say to ensure public safety there is no access to the woodland but i don't think it's locked okay okay that was a really long walk around the field to get to here there was no direct route which is really annoying but yeah that was the route anyway and uh, I've got less than an hour before sunset. Looks like I might be able to get some good drone footage actually. And this is not typically classed as a 
clump. There's only really two clumps. You could, I class it as a clump. Sod it, yeah, it's one of the clumps. It's like a mini clump. So you got like, like a, I think some kind of like a non-defensive sort of living area with earthworks on the highest round hill. And you've got the castle hill, I think it's called, the fort, which has got massive, you know, earthwork defences, um, ramparts. And then you've got this long barrow up here. And they're all within sight of each other. Ah, oh, it's a lovely, uh, some lovely colours from the sun at the moment. Okay. Oh, it's very slippy along here. It's kind of like a chalky clay mix. It's like, you know, it's the same as stepping on ice, really. It's incredibly hard to walk on. I've got trail shoes, but my trail shoes are like hybrid. They're like for um, off-road and road. They haven't got the uh, sort of typical footballer style uh, spikes on, which would be ideal at the moment. But as I do a mixture of road, path and off-roading, there's no point, I, I'm not carrying two pairs of trainers with me. That's ridiculous. Okay, there's some kind of sign here. Don't worry, I'm not camping up here. I don't think, uh, I don't think they like you going up here, but um, I just want to have a look. I saw other people up here earlier on, so I'm pretty sure people do go up here. Why not? It's in the national interest, it's Long Barry, you know. I'm not, uh, I'm on a track at the moment, I'm not causing any damage, so I just want to have a look. I'm not going to camp up here, go back back to the, uh, the trees back there. I don't know if there's much to see. Couldn't really make out what the sign said. But I thought on the map that the path actually goes up past this. This is pretty cool. How cool is this? So this is remains of a long barrow, a round barrow. Put information up on the screen. As I said, I'm not too sure. Obviously this is private land, but um, I think you can say that this is some prehistory in the national interest. That's a trick point. Yeah. Obviously not a place to camp, I wouldn't camp here. So this is uh, in the middle. This looks like a round barrow to me. Okay, I'm heading back down to the path. Um, walking on this uh, tractor track, farmer's track. So, no harm done, eh? It's a shame they don't, I don't know, the sign was pretty worn away there, so it's hard to tell if they like people coming up here or not. As I said, to me, it looks, it looks like a brown barrow. It doesn't look like a long barrow to me. So, heading back towards the fort on a very slippy right away. Quite our in time before sunset. Ah. <sighs> okay, folks, this is where I, I camped last night. Didn't do any filming last night because I don't want to draw attention to myself with the bright light. Um, I did want to sort of do some nighttime filming, but yeah, I didn't in the end. Um, I did actually want to show you my um, winter set. It's not winter yet, it's still autumn. But I've got some of my winter gear with me, such as a sleeping bag, the light, ultra lightweight bivvy bag I put inside the tent to keep the sleeping bag dry, 
and silk liner. Um, I haven't got the total winter gear with me, but yeah, next time hopefully I can uh, show you what I take on a, a winter camp. So yeah, I'm just going to take the uh, tent down now, it's so pretty much out of the way, um, I'm going to uh, obviously pick up all my rubbish, there isn't any really, it's all in the plastic bag, and um, if there's anyone else's rubbish I'll also pick up that as well, but I don't think there is. Okay, so that's my tent down. And there's my rubbish bag, which I um, put on the outside of my bag so it doesn't stink my bag out. I don't know why other people don't do that. I presume they must put the rubbish bag in their bag. Um, and this this was here when I got out of this mark here. I don't know, there must have been some here, but I put my tent on it, so no ground disturbed there. And there's my other GoPro. And I will leave that there as I walk away and have to come back for it because uh, that's what you do when you're filming. So, so you can see me walk away from my camping spot, <laughs> but obviously in real life I have to go back and pick this up. So that's all that I think picked up. Like I wasn't there, apart from obviously I, I said my camera, I leave there and then I'll walk away to give the walking away effect on the uh, time lapse. Um, and then I'll stand here. For, down the bottom here for a couple of seconds out of view of the camera and then go and pick it up and stop stop it and obviously edit it so it looks like I'm <laughs> walking away which I am but I've got to walk back in real life I've got to walk back and pick up my camera of course. Well this guy today is really boring because it's not really good for photography in my opinion or any droning so yeah but it was a good good nice break out in the uh, countryside and the views from here are amazing actually um, stunning actually walking along this bit of the, uh, the fort yeah um, when you do come up to the uh, clumps uh, Please do bear in mind there are actually cattle uh, grazing the fields, I think, every time I've been up here. So, yeah, obviously if you're going to camp in this sort of area, you want to camp well away from the cattle and ideally out of sight and um, obviously put your tent up late, leave early. Um, as it is quite a popular area as well um, and of course pick up your own rubbish and pick up other I would say pick up other people's rubbish as well if you can because it gives you know obviously it gives a good impression of people who do do wild camp so yeah I like to do that I don't like if there's someone else's rubbish by my tent I'll pick that up as well because it doesn't give a good impression does it really if you if you were camping there even though it's not your rubbish um, 
and also it's a good thing to do. Okay, I forgot what this, the name of this place is called. It's, uh, it's the obviously the church, the burial ground of the church in the village. Um, I'll probably put the name up on the uh, the screen. Yeah, there's the church over there. Quite a spacious uh, burial ground, actually, for a village. Some old, uh, old graves here. But it's not. It's not really sort of like packed out like you see in a lot of old villages. Well, I guess there used to be a lot of industry and people living in, living and working in the villages, but there there aren't now. Peace. It's a real old area of the church, I'd imagine. It's left to overgrow, which they seem to do a lot in uh, churches now. So, this seems to be like a little nature area of the church, which they seem to do a lot, as I just said, now in churches. Ooh. Oh, look at this. It's all... overgrown and that's as far as I'm going to walk. Well, there's a better look at the church. So I'm guessing this area of the burial ground nobody visits these tombs. They're all long gone I guess. I'd like to thank everyone for subscribing to my channel. I've just reached over a thousand subscribers so thanks for that and if you haven't please do subscribe it helps me out loads.